I think it's safe to say you've fallen before while rock climbing. Yeah. <laughs> You guys are partners? Is that like ballet partners or is that like baby daddy? Marilyn married. Partner? Yeah, he's the okay. father. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I wasn't 100% sure. Did we belayed each other once and then yeah. we raised the horse and then. Yeah, yeah. Like, what, what's the world come to? Ballet partners are having kids now. I'm going to try to use my keen American intellect with uh, my growing up on Harry Potter to try to guess where you guys are from based on your accents. I only know two cities, which are London and uh, Brighton. <laughs> so Good luck. I'm guessing- But you're in the same part of the country. Are they? <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, I didn't know that. So I can take it by that you aren't from either of those places. Where are you guys, where are you guys from then? <laughs> I mean, what are the chances that we weren't from those two places? I thought, I, thought I had it. Around. <laughs> My accent is slightly northern. Sort of near yeah. Manchester. This is sort of near Manchester. It's near, sort of near Liverpool, which is where the Beatles are from. Maybe Ooh, you know fancy. And I'm from the Midlands, so I'm from near Birmingham. But oh, okay. Oh, I know. And nothing cool get... has ever happened in Birmingham ever. So <laughs> there's no reference we can possibly make. Peaky oh, Blinders. Ah, oh, Peaky Blinders. There you go. Oh, okay. No, uh, my favorite movie of all time is Hot Fuzz. So I don't know where that takes place, but Southwest, which is sort uh, of where you're from. Yeah. Southwest. Can you guys guess by, by my accent where I'm from? No, it kind well, of. I mean, uh, you've already told us you live near the Red River Gorge. Yeah, so that should be a hint. Kind of I thought it was like. somewhat slightly southern. Why did you? I thought that, but Ooh. come on, wrong there. So I'm from Ohio, which is like north cent. It's like northeast ish, but uh, there's a bit of a country twang around here it's like in the near appalachia so it's like uh, a little yeah. bit of that we mountain speech here we've learned not to try and do the american accent because remember when we did that and hey, I'm really good at the oh yeah that, that's that was gonna be the next thing uh i'd love to hear your american accents so my american accent is, is like you do a good sorry girl right? it's sort of like la girl it's like oh my god i just so love your shoes they're amazing you look so great that was super racist just, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great accent. It's crazy. I don't know why British people can always do American accents perfectly, and then Americans can never do British accents. Yeah, we listen to all your TV in Hollywood and uh, Hollywood. So I grew up on Harry Potter, so I can do like "You're a wizard, Harry," but like if it's not a good. direct yeah. quote. Yeah. Mama says he's my magic shoes. Yeah. See, so that was good. That was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's what I always do. Like whenever I do a British accent, I'm like, hello. I mean, I did, like, like a South you Park get character. You gotta get a character. Any character. It's always some governor. It's always some, some, it's all of a twist. It's always yeah, all it's a all twist, of a isn't twist, it? isn't like, it? The micro crisp in me computer went out. Crisp. Micro crisp. Is that what you guys call him? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I guess that that's another big difference is uh, in the states, climbing doesn't. It's a very it's it's hidden, I guess, in a way. It doesn't really exist in popular culture whatsoever. Uh, like it took me until twenty six to even realize there were like professional climbers. Um, it's very like something hippies do in a van, kind of you know here. And then in uh, Europe, it's it's a real sport. Like people know it exists. I feel like. Yeah, I would say the UK is actually not that dissimilar to somewhere, the yeah. States. It's somewhere really? in between because we had like old school yeah. mountaineers and stuff, but it's not like going to like Austria or France. Yeah, I mean, it's changing now. Like the Olympics has kind of really changed the perception of climbing, but it's not, it's definitely not a mainstream sport here. Um, Interesting. Yeah, you know, we have this history of mountaineering that people somewhat know about, maybe. I think like because of the sort of mountaineering history and sort of the heritage of that there's a sort of sense that going to the mountains is like is it makes sense and that's something that people do okay or people okay. did and but they don't, sort of like they don't know about rock climbing not rock climbing like you no. know the climb that you were referring to before where i like put that nut in and yeah. stuff yeah. like a tabloid newspaper wrote an article about me doing that and called me best british female mountaineer 
for doing that climb. Hell it's yeah. Like a, it's like a 50 meter <laughs> single, pitch. single pitch rock route. It's like not a mountain at all. <laughs> On the sea cliff. It's like, well, you can check that so, off though. You got that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Best in Although the world. No one believes what that tabloid says. So it yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Are there any stereotypes about American climbers for you guys that are different than uh, from European climbers or maybe even just climbers from any place Americans or... are often way louder. It's like you guys don't actually know how loud you're speaking. It's super weird. <laughs> you guys are talking to everyone at the crack. Yeah. yeah. You know, okay. like when you speak to your B-layer who's like right next to you, or like you, you know, if you're bouldering, it's like if there's a group of Americans bouldering, like the the decibels will be like. <laughs> <laughs> the enthusiasm. This is a good thing as well. But like the enthusiasm, the psych is like turned up to eleven. You know, it's like. But you could say that our psych, you know, we is, we don't, we're more reserved. Yeah. Brits mm. as a as a nation. So you know, if we're if we're like really excited about climb, we're like, yeah, it's pretty good. You know, whereas you guys are like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the other big thing for me I've noticed, uh, this is just with all sports and anything, but Americans are a lot less humble, <laughs> typically. There's pros and cons to that, though, because I think Brits can be like so humble to the well, point that false, it's just like, it's, it's false just humility false. sometimes. Uh, it's not okay. actual, because you know? it's like genuine humility, I think. Is, like, They're like, recognizing. I'm so bad at climbing. It's like, <laughs> no, you're not. You've yeah. climbed for 20 years. You're obviously really good. Like you they're fishing I mean? for a compliment. Like they want yeah, you to be like, no. Like, I, I get bored of that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Now. I don't I'm think humility, like, like real humility, isn't just saying that you're not that good. It's recognizing that, that you know, recognizing more to the learn. way you are good and the way you're not good and the, you, the way you've put efforts in. And, you know, if you've put 20 years of worth of effort into climbing, you recognize that you know, you've done this well, but not like you're not the God's gift yeah. to climb. Yeah. Like you should be able to recognize and say out loud, I'm the best female mountaineer in the world right <laughs> and i got the print to prove it <laughs> yeah exactly yeah nothing wrong with that pretty much anything like i would say around six or seven meters i just kind of panic mode where i'm they just i just want to sit there i don't want to come off the wall or find a good jug and i'll pretend to shake out a bunch and be like oh yeah i'm really pumped like yeah i don't know if i can keep going i'm pretty pumped guys like da 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 you really like laying out the avoidance tactics really yeah well. exactly yeah <laughs> so for you for you with with the sort of exposure therapy to, to grow more comfortable falling you'd really have to use height as a variable because height is going to be this thing that really increases your stress response so you might even start doing some fall practice like slightly lower obviously like within safe distances from the ground and your b-layer and stuff but you, like you would certainly not want to like go to the top of one of the biggest walls in the red river gorge and like start your fall practice there <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like yeah. gonna freak you out way too much right so just being aware of those sorts of variables is really helpful if you've ever met or know uh ryan from the climbing struggle podcast he lives down oh, there yeah, yeah. yeah and he ryan, tries yeah. he's he's been bullying me lately trying to get me to come lead climb with him and he's made me do it already and I was terrified and he's like we're going back out and you're topping it this time I don't care <laughs> well maybe you should do our course and then yeah see honestly how you feel. I, maybe I should and then I can one-up him I'll get out there and I'll be like puff my chest out a bit <laughs> yeah. he won't know what hit him and tell me a little bit about your uh yeah your course yeah so we you know it's strong mind which is our business we have like three online courses but we are about to launch one with altitude and it's all on fear of falling. So it's like how to overcome fear of falling, basically, for rope and bouldering. And if you want to learn more about that. Altitudeclimbing.com forward slash fear. Yeah. And that will, that will give you like a free mini course. Because like I, th I feel like a lot of people don't actually know if they want to work on their fear of falling or not. And so basically the little mini course will kind of run you through some questions and stuff that will help you sort of figure out if this is something that's limiting your climbing. Um, yeah, I think that can be really helpful, the sort of questions working out, because people think they don't have fear of falling, if they sort of think that it's either like rational or normal, and it is completely normal, but it doesn't mean you can't work on it, and you can't like stop it from limiting your climbing, and you can be having basically okay. just be having more fun climbing. So what would you say then is, 
a, a main key that people could use for getting over fear of falling if it's not convincing yourself that it's irrational or rational. I mean, we wouldn't be in business like with an online course and a company if it was as easy as just telling yourself <laughs> it was irrational, right? I mean, like I thought I was going to get all the, the answers real do. quick and then take it for myself. So really, like it's the, you know our approach that we use with the online course is is kind of how you approach um, many fears and and sort of like historically what what's been done um, sort of in the history of psychology which is basically like a form of exposure therapy um where you kind of like gradually expose yourself to the thing that scares you which in this case is falling but also being mindful that when we say fear of falling it's got a lot of things are connected to it right it's got fear of injury um fear of equipment error fear of belayer error um fear of the sensation of falling um you know even fear of of death, you know, so is, there's all these different fears connected to fear of falling. Um, and so you have to sort of tailor the exposure therapy with that in mind. And the main thing with, with exposure therapy is you, you can't really be pres prescriptive. And this is the mistake that so many people make. They go, okay, well, I'm going to fall like this many times at the bolt. Then I'm going to go 10 centimeters higher and fall this many times. And then I'm going to go 20 centimeters higher and fall that many times. That doesn't work because um, we don't know that our kind of nervous system or our brain has adjusted. So we really need to learn how to kind of tune into our stress response and kind of use that as a guide. And so how we approach it is like, okay, well, you're not going to get over your fear of falling by avoiding it completely. And you're not going to get over your fear of falling by exposing yourself to really scary, intense experiences, which actually just further ingrain your fear of falling, right? And that's that's the big mistake people make. So really, it's about treading this fine line um, between doing this thing that kind of elicits a stress response in you, but not doing it to such an intensity that you have a negative experience with it. So like the whole online course that we teach with fear of falling is about giving people the tools to be able to do that um, themselves. So then they essentially guide their own practice. So we never say like, take this fall or take that fall. It's oh, that's like, oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. It's like, what yeah, that's, fall is uh, actually uh, appropriate for you right now? Yeah. That's another thing I would have assumed would have been something, I guess, I don't know how to get over the fear of falling. So it makes sense that my assumptions would be incorrect, but right. I a hundred percent thought it would just be like, just get up there and fall a bunch. Like stop being a baby. So. <laughs> well, that'd be like me writing you a training plan and say, Hey, you're going to, you're going to hang on the beast maker edge with 10 pounds added. And then next week you're going to do it with 20 pounds added and then 30 pounds the next week. I've never met you. I yeah. don't even know how yeah. strong your fingers are. And that could like give you an injury for those 10 pounds yeah. in the first yeah. week. That would give me an injury. I can barely hang with just my body weight. So it's good to know. <laughs> Normal things like a small dynamic move, like a throw or even a dead point, I won't be able to do or I won't commit to it. But when I was speed climbing, I got to the point where we were in a comp, um, which was the I was building up. I was training for this comp to see how well I could get at speed climbing. I had no issue. I was going all the way up to the wall as fast as I could and like diving for the thing and smacking it, no issue. But I was so focused on all the moves I had done. And I was like, oh, it really does that. Like if you're really locked in, like I completely forgot, you know, that how high up I was or I just didn't, I didn't have the capacity to care. Yeah, yeah. So like, you know, if you are really focused and, and I think sometimes people think that they don't have fear of falling because sometimes they can climb without fear of falling. Um, you know, like on a red point burn or like in a competition. Um, but ideally we want to be able to not have that fear limit us in all the scenarios, right? Not just these like really unique scenarios um, where we're super focused. Yeah. And I think, you know, that the whole like speed thing kind of speaks to why climbing such a scary sport is that like, it's climbing is a very slow sport. We have time to freak out, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whereas like, say you're skiing or something and you go down a mountain, you know, I'm sure yeah, skiing is scary as well, but like to some extent you can kind of get in the zone. You can, you can access a kind of flow because things are happening really fast. You've got to respond to them. Yeah. Whereas climbing, you can just like stop and freeze and, and, and kind of freak out. But the thing is, it's like full practice is still the answer because how do we 
know, how do we create more knowns versus unknowns? Well, we practice that thing, right? So like, I usually know what's going to happen when I fall off something. And that's why I'm so comfortable to do it. Uh You know, I know that like, I'm going to fall probably around this far. And I know that it's going to be a soft catch because I trust my B layer. And I know I'm not going to hurt myself. So like, I'm not scared of it because of that. But if you don't ever fall, how do you know those things? You just don't know them. It's not possible to remove remove risk from everything. And and rather than just try this impossible thing of removing risk from everything, you're better off recognising risk and to learning to manage it. I think that's what a lot of climbing is about, actually. What like for before people come into climbing, that's what climbing has to offer a lot of people that come to climbing. And it's a shame that it's been like kind of removed, tamed out of climbing. So basically, people should skip sport and just go straight to free soloing. (laughs) <laughs> cut out cut out the middle ground and that's, that's absolutely the opposite of, of what we teach in our course <laughs> but yeah <laughs>